The Eagles are up next at MetLife. Kim Jones is as well from Newsday, covers the Giants. Kim, welcome. Always good to see you. Happy New Year as well. Same to you, Moose. Yes, uh, last week for the Giants. Yeah, last week for the Giants in, in what is going to be a fascinating offseason. Uh, let's, let's look at this matchup. They want to beat Philadelphia, right? They've lost yeah. five in a row. This is an Eagles team that is in an utter state of disarray. Um, who knows how they handle it? Is, is this the Giants' best chance of beating the Eagles on Sunday as of late? Yeah, yes. I think that you put it very uh, properly. I also think because they have the opportunity to play them this Sunday certainly gives the Giants their best, latest chance. Listen, since Saquon Barkley was drafted back in 2018, he has a, I believe he has a personal record of 2-10 and 10 against the Eagles. That bothers him. He's a Pennsylvania guy. Um, it, would it would bother him if he was from the moon, but, but it bothers him that they can't beat the Eagles. It, it, bothers, it bothers the locker room that they're asked about it, and they should be bothered by it. They, they just can't beat the Eagles. You know what interesting thing when you look at Philadelphia coaching matters, right? You look at it, they lost their OCDC. They haven't really looked the same all season long. Let's focus on the defense. Patricia now calling plays the former Patriot DC, former Lions head coach. What's gone on with that Eagles defense, Kim? Yeah, I don't have the ins and outs for you necessarily, Moose. I do think with, you know, a youngster like Jalen Carter, I, I think that there has been some immaturity um, that he can't kind of fall in line with those great veterans, meaning Brandon Graham, meaning Fletcher Cox, who somehow is still playing this game and at a, at a decent and a high level is remarkable to me. But there should be enough in that Eagles locker room to turn around some of these performances. I frankly am surprised they aren't there. And, and I think they're probably asking the same question, frankly, that you asked me. Why aren't they playing better? All right, let's talk a little bit about Saquon Barkley, Kim. Um, you know, loves being a New York Giant, but talked uh, earlier this week and said, you know, looking for a fresh start, but reiterated the fact that he only wants to be a Giant. Yeah. But given the running back situation, how running backs are pay, play, uh, paid in the NFL, do you think Sunday's game is Barkley's last game as a New York Giant? I don't, but that's only because I'm a, a really big optimist and I'm a big fan, obviously, of Saquon Barkley's going back. And I don't make a secret of that. We share an alma mater many, many years apart, but he's a Penn Stater. I met him when he was at Penn State, so I've known him a long time. I believe I know his character. Here's what I would say to Giants decision makers. If you take Barkley out of that locker room, who is the conscience in that locker room? Who is the guy in that locker room? You know, Bobby Okereke? Maybe. As a, as a linebacker, he's had a great season. Maybe it's Bobby Okereke. But in terms of a drafted giant, Saquon's it. It's just hard for me to think that they can't come to some kind of an agreement where he essentially can be what he wants to be, and that's a giant for life. All right, let's talk about the quarterback situation. From, from your observations, Kim, do you think the, the decision makers within the Giants, are they more concerned about Daniel Jones's durability or his talent? And do you think they address the quarterback position with an early draft pick in the spring? I think they are not concerned about his talent. I do think they have to be concerned about his durability. It's time after time, injury after injury. There, there, it's a multitude of injuries, different body parts and everything else. So um, do I think they address it? I do think that they address it if they like a quarterback who's there. And I know that's a cop out, but other than that, I just can't tell you right now what their thinking would be. If the quarterback that they covet is there though, I think they have to take him. Would you include, like, Dexter Lawrence potentially in a deal to move up to go get your quarterback that you believe is your franchise quarterback if you're Joe Shane? Here's my reaction. <laughs> what would they do without Dexter Lawrence? <laughs> Dexter Lawrence is worth every single penny he got, and that guy got a gazillion dollars in that contract. Um, he is their best player. He is fantastic. He has gotten better under this coaching staff, Andre Patterson in particular, where would they be without Dexter on offense? I, I think they all would shudder to think. For a straight, sneaky reason, I, I think the Giants are actually going to beat the Eagles on Sunday. I don't know, for whatever reason. What do you think, Kim? Maybe. <laughs> Can I 
<laughs> you, you maybe. Yeah, listen, it's one of those moves. You've seen so many of these games. You have to see it to believe it. I do think, however, and this is important, this Giants locker room has not lost its way. They're still intent on preparing to win. They're still intent on doing the right thing on game day. Obviously, we see where they've fallen short in that capacity. 